So we are doing some work with Mr. Ollie uh -uh, on the halty. So what the halty is, is it goes over a pressure point over the bridge of the nose, which creates calm. Um, it's a natural pressure point that dogs use and utilize with each other often. So we're just kind of simplifying it in the human world. Um, and making it the most gentle and effective way to work with young dogs and puppies, especially if they have some anxiety or, or super scatterbrain, which this little boy has both. Um, and so what we're going to do, the hardest thing for this little guy to do is just to hold still. So we're going to do a lot of calm behaviors, kind of skip out on the crazy, um, excitable behaviors for now. <clears throat> we're working on calm behaviors and standing still as much as he possibly can. So when he's following me around the house, every time I stop, he's doing this, which is being in a calm, submissive fashion, and he's paying attention to me. Even though he wants to look around, he knows the dogs are out and things like that, his focus is still on me. Good boy. When he gives me a lot of contact, I'll give him just a little bit of a taste of a treat. I'm not giving him a full treat. You can see here, I just let him kind of get a lick. Motivating for him, I'm not bribing. Um, when he does a good behavior, I mark it with giving him a treat. So with the halty, what we're doing is anytime he's doing something we want, that buckle is hanging nice and loose. If you can see that little knot there at the bottom, hanging nice and loose underneath his chin. And if he does something that I don't want, which is like move forward, uh -uh, I'm going to apply pressure straight up and then release once his butt hits the ground. Especially for jumping, he likes to jump up and so we're gonna take his space instead of him take our space. So you'll notice that when he jumps up or he comes towards me, I walk towards him and take his space, good boy. And then I get more calm focus from him. Easy corrections without having to be a bully, um, which is awesome. So when he's walking right next to me, there's no pressure on this leash. If he's zigzagging or he's trying to go behind me or things like that, I'm either gonna apply pressure straight up give him a pop to the side, which pulls him into me, um, or I'll kind of be motivating with my voice, getting him to walk right with me. So there's this two foot by two foot zone. There's this two foot by two foot zone, and he likes training. He gets excited at first, which is typical for a puppy. Two foot by two foot zone that I want him to stick into. If he's not in it, I'm going to apply pressure up and release that pressure. I'm not going to sit there and constantly give obedience commands because if you're having to say it more than once, what's going to happen is he's going to ignore you more and more and more. Uh, uh, uh. He just wants the treat, which is why he's not getting the treat. <clears throat> give him a pop. So he's not used to being told what to do. Um, he's used to just doing what he wants, which is why he marks. Um, it's also why he's kind of starting to hump with other dogs and things like that. Neutering is going to help with that, but also controlling resources. So he's not going to get the treat until he forgets that I even have one in my hand. Um, I'm not using it as a bribe. It's there for when you do excellent behavior. I'm get, still getting focused. He's kind of thinking, what on earth do I have to do to get her to give me that treat? Come on. <clears throat> um, and so the treat only happens when you're doing unexpected behavior or an expected behavior unexpectedly. So here I'm going to stop, and he's doing awesome at automatic sits. I'm going to stop. Once he sits, I'm going to give him a little bit of a treat. It's only a taste. He's not very good at chomping down on stuff. He's kind of got a funny jaw. Good boy. When I get that focus. Good, good sit. I want my reward with my voice and my attention and affection and affirmation to mean more to him than the treat in my hand. Good. Come on. Uh-uh. Anytime he messes with his face, it's just a little pop-up. And I'm literally using fingers worse. So we're not using force. It's not a correction physically necessarily. Throws him off balance, gives him something to think about. Good boy. All that focus. Sit. Stay. Uh-uh-uh-uh. I'm going to move forward. Stay. He is a super submissive psychologically sensitive puppy. So we can utilize body language with him. All I'm doing is taking a step forward every time he takes a step forward. Um, the hardest thing for him to do is down stays and sit stays. Why? Because he has a really hard time holding still, right? Mr. Scatterbrain. So what I'm going to do is wait for him to forget about coming to me or calming down, right? And then here, good, sit, good, good boy. And I'll give him a little bit of a taste of a treat. Grab that leash. We'll do the same thing with place work. Ollie, up, up, place, yes, sit, stay, uh-uh, stay. If he moves up, you think I'm gonna stay here, huh? He's not used to me talking on camera, uh-uh-uh, back. Good, stay. He's not used to me talking on camera, he thinks I'm gonna recall him, which is a good distraction for a puppy, right? No, stay. So I want you to practice place work with him 
non-stop in the house. Getting him to calm down, not focus on everything around him, whether he wants to chew on something or anything like that. Want him to stay good. Want him to stay in a particular spot that you choose. The more that we control space with him, the less he's going to want to mark. Why? Well, because everything belongs to mom. I'm lucky enough to share it. And he's super highly food motivated. So we're going to utilize that with us. He's getting fed once a day. So he has food drive throughout the day and it's healthier for them. Leave it. He's so stinking cute. <laughs> uh, he does get goobers in his eyes, so I think that the food is finally kind of pushing out all those toxins from the last food. So he does kind of get those goobery eyes and some of that uh, tear stains. Um, he got a little bit of that where his collar is, so I think he's got a little bit of a sensitivity to nylon too. Super common. I usually put leather collars on my dogs if they have a collar on at all. Um, Anyways, back to place work. I don't care how long it is. You can move around. You can back tie him. Back tying is like you're back tying him to a furniture, um, a railing or things like that. You just want it in a targeted area, a targeted place that he knows is his place. This is going to help us massively when we get him off leash. Door manners, not bolting out of the door. When people come over, he can go to his bed and calm down before he says hi. So we're working on jumping and things like that. We're also going to be utilizing it to work on recall. You can see how he's calming down slowly but surely. In the beginning, he was waiting for me to release him. Uh -uh. Working on his anxiety. Um, this puppy has quite a bit of anxiety compared to what most puppies would have, especially Cavaliers. They're usually pretty chill. Um, and so we're working on a lot of anxiety. Building focus is going, and confidence is going to decrease anxiety. Um, giving him a job to do is going to decrease anxiety. So he's doing really good. In the very beginning when we do this, he would whine the entire time. Why? Because it used to get him some attention. So I think a lot of it's a learned behavior as well. Good here. Yes, sit uh, uh, off. Good boy. Give him that whole treat. Very good. You don't even chew. You just swallow it. You stink. Come on. So that one treat lasted me a good 10 minutes. So you can tell we're not focusing, good boy, good sit. We're not focusing on purely treats and obedience. We're focusing on his behavior. And obedience is kind of an outcome of that, which is pretty awesome. So you can see here, he's walking right with me. I want his head or his shoulder to be equal with my thigh at all times. He's excellent. Uh -uh -uh. He used to be a maniac on the leash. Good sit, good boy. Automatic sit, gets attention. Now, if he were to not sit, now he's pretty darn good at this, but if he were to not automatically sit, then I'm going to apply pressure up with the halty and release once his butt hits the ground. If he gets nervous or overexcited about anything, you're going to apply pressure up, release once he calms down and puts his butt on the ground. Nope. When he gets excited, he wants to jump, so I'm going to give him a pop every time he does that with the leash. You could tell he doesn't really even pay too much attention to that pop. Um, it's pretty much just to throw his body off balance and give him something else to do, which is focus on me. What on earth does she want me to do to get attention? Uh-uh, here. Good, sit. Very nice. Come on. Sit. I'm going to walk into him. Stays for puppies that are not on place or the hardest because they don't have a target. Uh -uh -uh. They don't have a target area. You can see here he knows back. So only using my body language, getting him to back up. Uh-uh. Take a step forward or release that step forward by taking a step back once his butt hits the ground. We'll start off with, I can get to him about a yard's, uh, my backyard's length, but with you guys, we'll start off with him about this far, about four to six feet, and then it'll get farther and farther. You'll be able to run circles around him. But for that first transitional period, we want to make it as simple as possible, setting him up for success by not giving him the opportunity to fail. Very good. Sit. Very good boy, you're so good. Come on. Lots of confidence. Oh, look at that happy tail. <laughs> Very good. He loves to work. This puppy needs a job. Come on. He has kind of become so anxious and scatterbrained because he's super smart. He's pretty darn drivey, um, <clears throat> physically and mentally. And so he really just has not known what to do with himself. And now we're teaching him what to do with himself. I gave him the opportunity to automatic sit. He didn't do it. Guess what? I took one little tiny step forward with my foot and he sat down. So I don't need to constantly nag him with verbal. Dogs aren't verbal creatures. Um, what I can do is teach the action first and then once he's very good at the action, I can reinforce 
with that verbal. So then my sit uh -uh, turns into a calm sit instead of where's my treat. <laughs> you get so excited. <laughs> as long as you're not jumping on me, buddy, you can bronco. <laughs> you're silly. Very good boy. I'm not touching him. Leave it. I'm not touching him a crazy amount. Um, because that ramps him up. He's used to kind of being babied. That using you as that security blanket. We kind of talked about that. Now we're teaching him to stand on his own four feet. Right? My touch is more of a calm massage or reward versus, oh my goodness, I need her in my life. We don't want that in our dogs. That creates naughty behaviors. He was a little bit fat when we first got him. Right now he's about perfect weight for a cavalier. These guys have a habit of becoming overweight very quickly. Since they're prone to heart problems and breathing problems and things like that anyways, we want to keep them nice and lean. <laughs> He's still got a little chunk on him as far as puppy goes. Um, but you want to be able to kind of see the indent of those last three ribs. Enough. Back, 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 back. Good. Sit. Good. Shake it off. There we go. If he's messing with his face too much, I'm going to walk into him until he backs all the way up. Sit. Uh-uh. Leave it. Leave it. You can see I'm just doing these little pops up. Garbage man makes him a little nervous. We'll go watch. Come on. Oh, scary, huh? Sit. Take one step forward. Step into him. Wait until he puts his butt on the ground. If he's fearful about something, it's going to take him longer to do those sits, right? And he's nervous about all of those cars. That big garbage man just passed. But guess what? His focus is on me looking for guidance instead of jumping up on me looking for that security blanket, which is awesome, which is when I'll give him attention. That's very good, all. That's very good, buddy. I know you want that. It's your face. Huh? I'll always give him a face massage so that the smell and the feel of the halty is really, really good and positive. <laughs> you dork. All right. I use a very light leash so it feels like there's no pressure on their face. Obviously, it takes them a minute to get used to having a harness on, but we're not physically moving him around. I want him to come with me. Uh-uh, leave it. Leave it. I want him to come with me because we have a relationship versus I'm forcing him, right? Unless he's messing with his face. That's pretty much the only time I have to correct him. That or getting excitable and jumping. Take a step forward. Good. He gets tired in about 15 minutes when he wants to start to check out mentally. That's when I'll put him up for a couple of hours. I'll let him go potty, let him run around, put him up for a couple of hours. <clears throat> um, if you watch his gait, that's another thing I wanted to point out, is he is a little, oh, come here, crazy. He is a little bit wobbly in that back end, so the leaner that you keep him, the better it's going to be on those joints as he gets older. I don't know if you can see. He walks kind of, drop it, drop it, Shh. drop it. Shh. No, leave it here. Good, sit, good. So I don't like what you're doing, stop it. Do this instead, good boy. So you can kind of watch on that right side, he kind of walks a little bit crooked. That's something to kind of keep an eye on. You can never start glucosamine too early or too late on a dog, especially these you know purebreds. Um, so that's one of those things that I'd watch on is his hip, he walks kind of crooked kind of a little bit duck-like. We'll see how he is when he starts to grow out of it and stuff. Now that he's a little bit thinner, that'll be a little bit less pressure on those joints. Good boy. Help those joints grow and solidify without all that pressure on there. Good. Sit. Good. Good boy. Oh, I didn't have a treat, silly. So no bribing. I'm just rewarding you for good behavior that I didn't even ask you to do. Very good boy. Very good boy. And that's going to create that automatic sit, that perfect recall. We'll do place work one more time. Meow. This way. Up, up. Yes, good boy. Up, up. You can rub your face. Come on. Up, up. Right here. There we go. I know you're getting tired. Sit. Uh, uh, uh. Stay. I could intermittent it too. Here? Yes. Sit. Good. No jumping. He thought about it, but decided to make a better decision. Good boy. You're so funny. You're so funny. Huh. I'll wait. Good. 